I'll start in three seconds, shall I? Uh, if you want, or five, or twenty, you know, whatever. Five. All right. Well, okay. Give me a counting. Give me a counting. I'll start from a counting. How's that? Okay. Seventy-two. No, I feel pro. Seventy-one. <laughs> Seventy. Troll. Okay, it's good. Okay, give me a counting from five. All right. Okay. You know, you have to be specific. <laughs> You're such a troll. I try. This yeah. is Mugo. Oh, oh, sorry. No. <laughs> you said give me a countdown, so I'm like, okay. All right, well, give me, give me a countdown then. Give me a countdown. Okay. Here we go. Five, four, three, two. This is MacGyver from the Chaos Portal, and you're listening to Azeroth Roundtable. You think that he emphasized the bull because he plays the Tauren? (laughs) Yeah, I think so, maybe. I don't know, he got way into it. Yeah, I know, I'm actually happy about that. We like it when people are way into it. Our (laughs) chat room technically wasn't done with the countdown. Moo, can you wait till uh, (laughs) Alessander hits go, and then maybe go? She is a professional chat room wrangler, so I don't yeah. think I'd want to mess with Alison. Yeah. No, no, definitely not. No. <laughs> Take it away, Ben! Ah! <laughs> Welcome to Azeroth Roundtable, episode 102! My name is Ben Baumhofer, and with me, as always, is John Jagger. How's it going, John? Oh, it's going great, Ben. How are you tonight? Eh, doing okay. Jeez, way to just kill the mood. I'm All doing this fantastic, energy, John! Woo! And then Ben just, eh, it's okay. I don't know. <laughs> they make me record on Friday. They just put me in front of a microphone. I just gotta do this thing. It's funny, because I'm kind of the one who's all like, hey, let's do this thing. And you're all like... I was all into it tonight. I did show notes. <laughs> I did some Photoshop to get ready for this show. I am excited, Ben. I'm happy to be here. Let's introduce our guest. That's a great idea. Um, this gentleman is someone who we met uh, a, a while ago back at BlizzCon. And I got to say, it was uh, absolutely fantastic to meet him in person. So, uh, welcome, MooGyver! Hello, 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 everyone. How are you out there? It's lovely to hear from you guys, too. It's been far too long since we chatted. Yes, most definitely. Although I'm actually super happy that we're Battle.net friends now. Yes, absolutely. It's It's been interesting, especially although our time zones don't always link up to be able to see people Very popping true. on and <laughs> popping out and all of that sort of thing. I am now over on Earth and Ring with you guys, mm-hmm. a, a part of AIE, and it's it's been good fun. Yep, and every now and then when I see you on a mall, eee, makes me happy. But generally, <laughs> I don't stay up too late unless it's uh, Friday or Saturday. But, you know, when I do get the occasional, like, oh my god, it's MacGyver, I totally freak out and, like, you know, have a, a <laughs> fangirl moment. I know him. Oh, st- I know him. <laughs> <laughs> send, me a, send me a tell. Say hi. I want to do stuff because our time zone means, unfortunately, there isn't always a lot of people around to, to do stuff with. So if you're around and you want to do stuff, just, just say. I don't bite hard. Oh. <laughs> Sounds like a plan, then. That's, hmm. I don't know if that's going to get you more interested in partying up or less, but the invitation's out there. If you want to get bit, MacGyver's your man. Hey, you, you seen those teeth on those uh, on the new selfie camera? Those torn teeth—they're they're sharp. They're sharp impressive. teeth. They're used they for are very flat. Impressive. They're used for grinding. <laughs> I just scrolled the show notes down a little Constant bit and saw a new chewing. gift that John put in there. <laughs> I'm breaking the show unintentionally. Thanks. Uh, to get back on track then, uh, Moo, um, how have you been doing? Uh, and what have you been up to either in or out of WoW? Well, I I have been playing WoW. I haven't been playing as much WoW lately as I as I have been wont to do. Um, just mainly through a lack of time and lack of energy. My, my real life work lately has been a little bit crazy and you know, you, you only have a certain amount of energy you can give, and at the end of the day, sometimes it's a choice between, hey, I could play games until 10 o'clock, or I could just pass out on the lounge, and passing out <laughs> on the lounge wins a lot of the time. So, But when I have been playing, I've been getting to LFR. I haven't yet tackled Blackrock Foundry, but I've been, I've been, I'm up to eye level 645 now, so, nice. you know, I'm just getting there, getting there, getting, you know, the extra garrison missions. I finally picked up my selfie camera. 
Um, but the most fun I've been having is uh, photobombing my wife's selfies, uh, <laughs> which, <laughs> which I, I put up a nice uh, picture of that the other day. And, yeah, just, just generally pottering around and exploring. And I, uh, I finally used my free boost oh. as well because Who'd my boost? free boost had been... Ah, well, my, my boost had just been sitting there because I couldn't figure out what to do because I only have a limited amount of time and I have two max level hunters and I thought, you know, what, what do I want to do? And, uh, and after seeing the awesome elemental power that you, that you see in all the cinematics with, you know, Thrall doing his, doing his <laughs> stuff, you made uh, another I rolled hunter. an elemental shaman. Very a Tauran cool. elemental shaman, of course. And uh, I have been having so much fun with that shaman. It is just... Just the power of the lightning bolts from your fingers and Very lava cool. and earthquakes and smog and all of this sort of stuff. It's it's amazing. I love it. I'm really enjoying it. Good. Uh, now, are you going elemental then? So just, I mean, you said elemental shaman. One would assume that means that, but, you know, yes. shamans use a whole bunch of different elements. But I just want to double check and, you know, make myself sound like an <laughs> idiot. So. Good job, Ben. No, right. I, unless... <laughs> Unless I'm doing it wrong, no, I, I picked an elemental shaman because I, what I've discovered about my nature is that I, by tendency, avoid conflict. I don't get up in people's <laughs> faces. I would rather smack them from afar while all the while basically saying to them, Nina, Nina, you can't hit me, which is why I have a hunter that I have a, te- a pet that tanks for me. And mm-hmm. um, I like ranged classes. So I've got a mage who is a little bit squishy at the moment. I haven't leveled up, but... Uh, that's why I thought rather than enhancement shaman, uh, elemental shaman is, is kind of the thing. So, and lightning bolts. I mean, who doesn't want to fling lightning bolts out of their fingertips? It's Very true. Fun. Luke Skywalker. Yeah. He fought against it pretty hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so did Yoda, but he did it right. He stuck his weapon in yeah, the way. He, he actually no, he totally it. caught it, too. Just er, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nobody That's taught true. Luke that trick. They never thought that might come up. <laughs> no, no. Guy who's thrown lightning at everybody, and they never once thought, maybe we should tell him about the Luke, lightning. Luke, don't <laughs> throw your lightsaber away. <laughs> Do you think their ghosts were sitting there like, God, tell him about the lightning? Well, I, I, heard lightsaber. That getting, I heard that getting struck by lightning builds character, so, you know, maybe there was something into the end. <laughs> <laughs> he whines a lot less now. Of course, he now <laughs> has uh, arrhythmia with his heart, but he doesn't whine as much. Yeah. We, we could tell him how to avoid the lightning, but it's tough love, you know. We've, we've got to be we've got to be cruel to be kind, you know. Now yeah, that well, appreciates the time he has. Vader's over in the quarter. Noob, didn't read the dungeon journal. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you ever run this emperor before? Come on. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, uh, my weapon's broken. Three steps to determination. Now, Any- that would be a good Star Wars role-playing game, one where you have the move and the option to just throw your lightsaber to the <laughs> side. <laughs> just your whole raid team's like, what did you do that for? I'm not participating in this. <laughs> seems, seems like the dark side. I'm not doing it. Well, don't pull. Isn't that like he threw his weapon releasing away. At the end of the, isn't that like people releasing at the end of the Lich King fight? Oh, I'm dead. I better release. <laughs> yeah. No! Uh. Anyway, so yeah, that's that's pretty much what I've been up to, is, is that. Um, I haven't had a lot of other game time, although I'm ashamed to admit that I got my first Xbox 360 at Christmas. It's only 10 years old. It's only been out for 10 years it's, and been superseded, but uh, I've also been scarily sucked into the world of collecting Skylanders because they're my sons. They really are my sons. They really are. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. scowl at eBay or the sales. No, oh, no. We've, yeah, we've, well, we've, you're doing it wrong. You need to get into Disney Infinity. Well, we have that too. Okay, yeah, and, you're fine. You know, so, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. That's that's for another couple of years when the uh, when the boys get a bit bigger and can handle the sandboxy environment. But at the moment, in uh, Skylanders is, is where it's at, and uh, we've been having a lot of fun doing that. And that's that's good. That that's one that we can all play together. So, yeah. So I've been sort of spreading my time around a little bit. And then you can buy amiibos. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> two out of three. That's as far as I'm going. <laughs> well, I have two words for you. Uh-oh. Mass effect. Uh, you kind of cut out at the beginning there, and I heard something different. Okay. You might have intended to say. <laughs> mass effect. <Okay. laughs> oh, I love mass effect. It's great. I, I did pick up Shadow of Mordor. 
I've got to say. And I played, because I love talking. I'm a talking nut. And so I saw shit. I'm like, oh, I've got to get this. And I got up to the second mission. And after three weeks of not being able to pass it, I promptly threw my controller away and said, screw you, Shadow of Mordor. But so I'll here's come back the to it problem. Eventually. The thing that makes Shadow of Mordor great is not in the old generation version of the game. Ah, yeah. I hate to okay. I hate to tell you that at this point now, but it sounds like you were maybe done with it anyway. But oh, uh, the thing shame. that makes the game cool is not in that version of the game. Yeah, it's uh, oh, it, it's got this whole nemesis system that just makes it such a, a joy to play, and it's only on uh, Xbox One, PS4, and PC. That's the only way that I played it was on my PC, and really? I I love that game. That's interesting because there is a, a Nemesi kind of system from what I've seen. The problem tends to be where um, you have a whole, bot of, a whole lot of these bosses that, oh, there's one on his own, I'll go and get him, and then three of his mates come around the corner and promptly wipe the floor with you. So that was, that was kind of my main frustration. But I'll pick it up eventually when, uh, when WoW's in a bit of a lull and mm -hmm. I've got a little more spare time on my hands. So. There you go. Also get Mass Effect. Yes. Mass Effect. I will. Effect. All good. <laughs> just get the trilogy, yes. pop it in when the kids are asleep, and just play. Trust me. Hmm. Okay, I might have to check check that out. I'll see if I can get a second hand because we still have second hand shops these days. You can get that kind of stuff now. <laughs> you can nice. probably get them all pretty cheap, nice. actually. We have second hand yeah. shops. We call them GameStop. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. They, <laughs> they, uh, that's actually. It was actually a bit of a funny story. This is completely derailing, but That's fine. at Christmas, I actually picked up the Xbox. It's a second-hand Xbox because, you know, I didn't want to get something brand new that's 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And it's good fun, nice and cheap, which is good. We picked it up at our equivalent of GameStop called EB Games, and we had an old Nintendo Wii. And so I packed up all of the old games and the accessories and the Wii and, all, and everything, took it into the shop and said, you know what, we'll do, we'll, we'll trade this in, we'll get some games, get some Skylanders, have fun. And we ended up getting about double the amount of money that we thought we would for trading all oh, wow. of this stuff in. And so I just said to the kids, go nuts, go, go play, forage, be free, get what you want. <laughs> and so we picked up a whole heap of stuff. And it's nice because things like the Skylanders, they're like $17, $18 brand new. But you can pick them up secondhand for like 2 $3. So we just oh, wow. got this big armful and brought them all home. And yeah, and, and that's actually where I picked up Shadow of Mordor cheap as well. So it was good. Cool. Very it's the way cool. to do it. Uh, John, how about you? What have you been doing? So I've had a really hard time <clears> playing just about any WoW beyond the Garrison game. Um, you know, the game we've talked about many times that I've said I actually appreciate for weeks when I don't get to play WoW. Mm -hmm. uh, turns out this has been one of those weeks. I didn't get to raid. I uh, didn't get to really get on at all. Although, I did buy a new game, because naturally, when you don't have time to play the games you already have, you think, well, what can I buy that's new to take up this time I don't have? Mm -hmm. And I got Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse, Ben. I know you did. <laughs> and uh, I started playing it uh, in earnest last night. And as you know, I, uh, I was going to go to bed early. That was the, that was the plan. Mm-hmm. I got a text from you, and uh, that's what I saw. And I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, I knew you couldn't make it to raid. That's fine. I told so everybody. At, so at 2 a.m., when I realized it was 2 a.m., and oh, I was man. still playing Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse, I thought, I have made some poor life choices. This whole thing is a poor life choice. <laughs> I don't want to tell people that game is good. Because I feel like I would be lying to a lot of people out there. <laughs> well, okay, John, let me ask you this. Okay. Do you like Dragon Ball Z? Yes. Sort of. Okay. I think I do. <laughs> and I do you like I the do. game? That makes sense. Now, let's pretend that I don't like it. Do you think I'd like the game? Probably not. Okay. There you go. There's your qualifier. Now, Ben, as somebody who I know likes Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> you may want to check this game out. Yeah. Um, it is, it is just, it is what I love. You, it's what I kind of wish WoW did more of. And like, that's the thing that I'm kind of playing it and, and kind of thinking and keep coming back to is I get on, the gameplay is just fun enough for me to want to, you know, wanting to keep doing it. And 
I keep unlocking cool things as I go. <laughs> There's like cool rewards to get like costume pieces and new moves and leveling up like there's they just give you all this stuff and a lot of it is just visual kind of worthless stuff some of it makes you stronger some of it is like hey this does the same thing as the thing you had but it's blue now um and even though that all sounds real artificial and dumb i'm way into it i just like i get done with a fight and i'm like you know, I could do another fight because I might get a Kamehameha and I probably need to get the Kamehameha <laughs> wave. Like, that's probably an important thing for me to have. And so I would go back in and do it again and see how I see if I got it. And, you know, oh, I didn't get that, but I got some pants that are cool. And so <laughs> it just keeps, like, giving you just enough to make you want to keep playing constantly. And that's how I ended up playing it until 2 a.m. Good to know. <laughs> and that is quite literally everything I played this week. <laughs> Beyond just working obscene hours. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's not exciting. So we won't talk about that. Okay. But uh, Dragon Ball Z, if... If you like Dragon Ball Z or are like me and have seen it and have an appreciation <laughs> for it despite the quality of the product, you know what? I like Dragon Ball Z like I like wrestling. I know I shouldn't like it, but I do anyway. So <laughs> if that's you, you might like this game. Perfect. So what what do we call it is guilty pleasure. Yeah, guilty pleasure is a good word. Yeah. But I have no guilt. Hmm. I'm proud of it. I'm talking about it publicly on the internet. So it's a prideful pleasure. <laughs> yeah, that I feel sad about. <laughs> shameless pleasure. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Shameless pleasure. I like that. There we yeah. go. I have yeah. no shame. Uh, ben, what about you? Wow. I have been busier in WoW than I have been for months. because. Oh, really? Yes. Ben? Why? What would cause that? Would it maybe be that a patch came out? I have been running seven people through three different raids, and that's <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, you have. Yeah, so, so I've been doing the raiding with Leashes 3. That's that's the thing. I, I mentioned last week that Eludra and I were in a competition to see who can actually get the achievement first. And as of last night, well, actually, as of, like, Monday or Tuesday... <laughs> Um, I was. I have eleven of the twelve pets. I just need one of the face soup and three face thing in in Black Temple. So, this week since Tuesday, I've taken every single character that I have that can run that, like you know, in some sort of solo capacity, into Black Temple. Run in there, killed everything up to that boss, killed that boss, saw nothing drop, immediately hearthed, logged out, switched characters, run in again, and. Uh, Gotta wait till next Tuesday before I can do it again, and I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> so, Ben, uh, 6.1, you were a little meh about it when we talked a week ago. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about 6.1 now? In all honesty, about the same, because all I did from 6.01 uh, last week was run these raids. What I've been doing this week? Running these raids. That That's about it. So, yeah. But, and we're going to get into this a little bit more later, I have a selfie cam on my main, on my yeah. monk, I believe on my paladin, and I think my hunter too? Something like that. I'm not entirely sure. And I haven't gone super duper selfie crazy. I've taken a couple pictures. I haven't posted any of them. But that's kind of, for the most part, what I've been doing. Guess what? What? If you get the mission to upgrade your selfie camera... Everyone gets it. Everyone gets it. Yep, goes in the toy box. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. And then you don't have to worry about who has it and who doesn't have it. That's true. Everybody will have it. I will say... Well, I'm very really pleased to hear that. Yeah, it, it's... Uh, oh, yeah, and then you get filters and stuff, like, on Instagram, so... Woo! Yeah, like <laughs> the death filter. Everybody loves the Instagram death filter, where it shows you what it's like to be dead. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's just black. <laughs> it's <laughs> real eye opener, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's one black. of the uh, great side effects of actually running all this old content, 
Somehow I'm up to like 61,000 gold. This is the most I've ever had nice. in a game. So, woohoo! It's a lot of gold, Ben. Yes, it is. You should, be, you should be proud of yourself. I am. I'm quite proud. Um, some of that is from selling do? duplicate like pets and stuff. What am I going to do with it? Not sure yet. You know, probably end up buying a stupid spine claw crab that I can't get because I never see the actual mob spawn in on the Timeless Isle. And anytime it's ever on the auction house, it's like way too much money. So maybe that. I might actually finish making the uh, jeweled panthers for jewel crafting. Maybe not. I don't know. Who knows? You should invest in gold. <laughs> okay. That's I'll the advice the... everybody always says. <laughs> I'll go to the auction house and buy all the gold ore. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Just gold. <laughs> Don't waste your time with ore. Just buy gold from the auction house oh, okay. with your gold, I guess. That's a good way to do it. Um, <laughs> but you know what? Speaking of buying gold, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the news. Oh, look at that. News. I don't know if you totally like <laughs> get over that or not. It's <laughs> the cat part of the bumper? Apparently now she is. Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm really anti-cat, but you know, I it's could go for that. that time? If you wanted to put that in the in the bumper, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. So Monday, Blizzard dropped a huge bomb on the community. Not really, though, because it, you know they kind of told us about it beforehand. <laughs> we kind of already knew yeah. about it, but they <laughs> confirmed that they had already dropped a huge bomb on us. Yes. And uh, what is that? That's the WoW token. Why, Ben, huh? what is a WoW token? I'm glad you asked. Hey, John, what if you couldn't pay for your WoW one month and thought, gosh... I would love to play or pay for WoW, but I don't have any cash. Are there any alternate ways that I can continue playing this wonderful game? That is a likely scenario. Continue. Well, what if I were to tell you that with that gold stockpile that I have, I could buy myself some WoW time? I don't see how this helps me in no, this situation. No, not at all. It doesn't, because I don't know how much gold you actually have. So you're saying... I think that I can buy WoW game time with gold. Yes, yes, you could. But Why didn't you really just cool? say that? That sounds amazing. How would I go about doing this, Ben? Well, here's the thing. Let's say MooGyver has, you know, a couple extra bucks lying around at home, and he's like, I could really use some more gold in WoW. What would you do, mm -hmm. Moo? Me? What would I do? Yeah, what would you do? <laughs> well, <laughs> you're supposed to be telling us about this, and you keep asking other people what they would do. Ben, as the expert on WoW Token, why don't you tell us what MooGyver would do? <laughs> okay, well, what he would do is... Uh... Tell me what I'd do! <laughs> okay, Mr. T. Um... Fool! Shut up, fool! <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think I he's going to get any extra gold. This okay. Way. Okay. Well, um, what Blizzard's going to do is flaws. actually they're going to have a button that you can push so that you can actually buy a WoW token with gold. Now, th there's well, okay, it wasn't how it was originally conceived by a lot of the community, which was you know the the market's going to fluctuate, people would be able to trade these, you know, things like that. And it's absolutely nothing like this. As soon as you buy it, you have a token in your bags. It's soul bound to you. You can't do anything else with it. You just hold on to it, you go up to the auction house, you find the place where you want to actually sell that, and then based on how much gold the current market price is going for, you can either say, hey, I want to sell that, and then you put it up for sale. That if you think like that that's not enough, then. it does. Um, Blizzard is actually going to be the ones completely in control of the actual price. So you know, it, it's going to be based, from what they said, totally on supply and demand. So if there's a billion of those wild tokens in there it might be only like a thousand gold if there aren't a lot it might be a hundred thousand obviously i have no idea how much they're actually going to go for but it can fluctuate quite a bit but the thing that i think is neat is the fact that blizzard is taking such a hands-on approach on this that it is not going to be fluctuating it is not actually up to the player base so it's not going to be just you know 
insane amounts of gold to get you know a month of playtime, or even just a tiny little bit of cash to get a, a, a whole bunch of gold. You know, it, it goes both ways on that. So the fact that even when you buy it, it's soul bound to you, and I I I don't think you can resell it, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but it it's yours when you buy it. Boom, that's it. And it's not going to be like normal auction or auctions are on the auction house. What's going to happen is, you know, it gets put up and then it's essentially put in line. All the ones that were put up before that are going to be sold. And then all of a sudden it's your turn. Boom, here's a sold. But even more so, when you put it up, that's the price that it's going for. And that's it. It does not change. And you can't get it back. So essentially all sales are final. So... So in other words, for people who have uh, experienced in Wildstar this exact same system, it's that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But if you don't know what that is, that's what it is. Yeah, and hopefully I explained it well enough. Uh, I don't know, because I already knew what it was. (laughs) Let me lift the curtain on this whole charade. What? I knew what WoW token was all along. Oh my God. Maybe <gasps> even better than Ben did. Wow. But I don't dun, know. Because I don't know how good his description actually was. Okay, so uh, Alessander um, asked in the chat room, said, it is kind of confusing. Um, you set your own price, but Blizzard has a set price too? No. Blizzard has a set price. Now, that price can go up or down. You actually hold on to the token... And when you look at the market value, decide, hey, do I want to sell it for that price? Or do I want to wait and hope that it goes up or down? Why you'd want it to go down, I don't know. But it's up to you on when you actually want to sell the token. Okay, let me try and clarify this, Ben. Okay. So it is not like a typical item on the auction house. You do not go up to the auction house and type in a value and say, this is what I want for this token and they say yes what it will be is there will be a specific vendor uh, in the game that's going to be for the wow tokens and when you go up to them um, if you have a token and you want to sell it they will tell you what the current value is gold wise for that that value is based on what people are paying what the rate is how many there are like it's math behind the scenes but when you go up to it you will know how much gold you're getting for the time. If you're going the other way, you will know uh, what the cost is. Same thing from the vendor, just from the other side. So it's better to not think of it as Blizzard setting the price and players setting the price. It's kind of them just saying, like, this is what the average is, so this is what the value is currently. Did you ever play Uh, Animal Crossing? It's like the turn-up vendor. Yes, exactly. So or like Wildstar. <laughs> there's there's two games right there. Turnips and Wildstar token things. Yeah. Hopefully that works. So anyways, it's gonna be coming. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Yep. Ben, are you gonna buy WoW game time? I don't know. With we'll gold? see. Yeah, I mean it all depends on how much it is. I mean, if a month is like, you know, five to ten thousand gold, yeah, maybe. Um, otherwise the system I've got in place right now is working pretty good. If it was ten thousand gold, you could pay for half a year of WoW right now. If it was ten thousand for half a year, yes, yes I could. Yeah. But I'm not gonna pay for half a year and get rid of all my money in gold. Yeah, but you'd have a whole half year to make it back. I would, but I'm not focusing on that, so I don't know. All right. Now, Moo, Thanks. is this something Thanks, that man. you actually are uh, looking forward to? Is it something that you're actually going to take advantage of? It It is something that I may take advantage of. If anything, I am not going to pay for game time with gold because much like Kevin from the Dark Moon Herald, I am terrible at making gold. I really don't have motivation to make gold. Uh, I have a sugar mama in my wife, Natani, who is actually quite good at the auction house and can send me gold if and when I need it, and I usually don't need that much. You know, my mama's simple means and simple tastes. Um, if anything, I'm going to be going back the other way. I'm probably going to be buying the tokens for real money and then selling them for gold. Mm-hmm. And so the, the something I've 
noticed recently is there's been a few people who particularly uh, obviously gold bloggers and people who have you know they've got gold coming out the wazoo they've got more gold than they know what to do with they're deactivating their subscription saying right that's it we are free to play for me from now on later and dropping mm-hmm. their mic and riding off on their motorbike now i think that that is predicated on there being enough people buying tokens for real money for people with heaps of gold to buy. Mm-hmm. And I think the number of people who have heaps of gold and want to buy tokens is going to far outstrip the number of people buying the tokens for real money. So I think the tokens are always going to be in short supply. What, How that affects the price, I'm not sure. But um, I've got a feeling that the, the people buying the tokens for the real money are going to... They're, you know, they're going to be the tanks of this queue. They're going to be the ones getting an instant win. I think you're kind yeah, of right, I, honestly. I think that's so. probably going to be the way it goes as well. And I might do it too. I'm also notoriously bad at making gold in WoW. So I, mm. if I ever do that, I might say, hey, I can buy another month of WoW and have my character have money. But this expansion has been one where I've seen a lot of money just accrue and not get spent. Mm. So <laughs> that's been, it's been actually really nice. Yeah, mm. which means that there's a chance that it could go for like fifty thousand for one token. Who knows? Yeah. It In could. that case, yeah, I, I don't know. And uh, fifteen dollars to almost double your money, Ben. Yeah, I would do that. Yeah, but see, that. this is where Blizzard really wants to make sure that they have an economist on payroll at this point. And I know that it's something that they kind of joked about, and I don't think they've actually hired someone, but. At this point, when you're actually directly influencing the economy in this way, I think it's beneficial so that it doesn't actually completely crash the market. Mm. So we'll see what happens. Um, John, there's more news that you put in there. So I did. What is it? Uh, so for people like Ben, who are uh, scared to death of spoilers um, and the <clears> things <throat> they'll do to them, uh just a warning, there's a couple spoilers out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those of you who did not know, um, there is a cinematic, an in-game cinematic, that is tied to the Legendary Quest, uh, which gives us a real clear picture of where the uh, Warlord story is going at this point. Um, a lot of us already knew it was kind of headed that way, but it's pretty much will tell you where it's going to be going. So it is very cool. Uh, I think everybody should check it out. But if you are allergic to spoilers, you will break out in a rash. So you've been warned, or I have told you to go check out something cool, and you can thank me later. Yep. Moo, thank you for that. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, no, that was perfect. I loved it. <laughs> ben likes it anytime anyone agrees with his anti-spoilers weirdness. Yeah, I... I do not like spoilers. Uh, thus, I am very careful when new patches come out about viewing new sites that could potentially have spoilers on them. So, um, I'm luckily that uh, Blizzard Watch uh, in, and in their old carnation as well, I, I won't mention the name, um, they were always very good about putting up spoiler warnings, um, Anne and, and uh, Matt Rossi particularly. Unfortunately, I didn't pay attention to one of Anne's spoiler warnings and i spoiled myself on something once and i saw you know the burned hand teaches best i i'm very careful from now on oh uh, so you <laughs> saw the uh the Negran cinematic then uh i did not i actually found out about the story in shadow moon valley with velen oh. which i won't say any more about but yeah so that that was that was i sort of went oh ouch i just you know um I honestly, and Alessandra has asked in the chat room, is this a spoiler that Anna has theorized about? I don't know because I haven't read it. Uh, <laughs> so. I, I don't think so. If, if it's the one I think you're asking me about, I don't think so. But it could be. I, she, I think she's theorized about a couple, so maybe. I will say, though, that uh, Shadow Moon Valley cutscene where Velen has a picnic with you after you save the day, really awesome. Like, really. One of the most <laughs> epic ones there is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, save me from the anti-spoiler people so be careful <laughs> out there in other news uh, there is going to be a new Hearthstone adventure Ben I know you're excited about this Woo! because you're such a Hearthstone fan last month's card back looked really cool it did not get me to sign in 
Okay, well, <laughs> what if I told you you could take your cards into Black Rock Mountain? Uh, okay, that's awesome. Yay! I think I have all of the mage ones unlocked now that you get did for you getting do, to level did 10. Did you do Naxxramas, Ben? Nope, didn't touch it. <laughs> Lou, where do you stand on well, Hearthstone? Okay, let me put it this way. I couldn't even get the first chapter free because I wasn't leveled up enough for it. So, Ooh. yeah. I will probably Ouch. not be going into Nax anytime soon. Much and what's it like to hate else. fun? Do you find that it just fills you with an indescribable <laughs> rage, or is it mostly ignorable, but when it sneaks up on you, you just have to kill it instantly? Well, it depends on the kind of fun. When it comes with cards, it's not fun. Everything's better with cards. Mm. Moo, how do you feel about Hearthstone? I love Hearthstone. I really enjoy it. However, I do not have a portable device... And thus, when I actually have a limited amount of time that I have to sit down in front of the computer, Hearthstone isn't my go-to thing. Uh, WoW typically is, and so, and, and occasionally, very occasionally, Diablo as well. And I love Hearthstone, and I love Diablo, but when you've got a certain amount of time, WoW is what's taking my time at the moment. If I had a portable device that could play Hearthstone, I can bet you I would play it a lot more. I'm kind of in the same boat with you, actually, because... <gasps> Because you it's not on the too. phone right now. Uh, mm. It's it's only on iPads, which I had one and don't anymore. Um, I If I'm sitting at my computer, I don't really want to play Hearthstone, typically. I typically want to play mm. something else. So it's a good laptop game. So occasionally if I'm just off with my laptop, but I, I have tried to use my laptop just for serious stuff or to have videos <laughs> on at its least serious. So... <laughs> Playing Hearthstone on it, I feel like I've betrayed everything I said the laptop was going to be for. So, mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, they're they're going to do Black Rock Mountain. Um, sounds like it's going to be a new adventure. I'm excited for it. I thought the next Ramus mm -hmm. stuff was great. Uh, I I really enjoyed that. I haven't done much with the goblins versus gnomes, so I don't know how that actually was. But things uh, I really a lot from what I've heard. I really like next Ramus. So I'm I'm excited about this. Mm. Yeah. I like the goblins versus gnomes better than Nax Ramus, just because it kind of suits my my <laughs> thing. Well, actually, you you know why? You guys know why? Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's just one of those things that um, yeah. If if I've got the time to sit in front of the computer, wow, is what I do, and um, I don't really do a lot else at the moment because I don't have a lot of spare time. But uh, yeah, I guarantee if I had a tablet. That, particularly if I had a, like a 3G card, like a, a, a portable internet card or something, I could play it out elsewhere. I know that my wife would love to have a 3G or 4G capable iPad so she could play on the train because she gets the train to work. I drive to work, so you know, playing Hearthstone and driving a card, <laughs> it's not advisable. Um, but if, yeah, if I was public, tra yeah, yeah. If I mean, if I was public transporting, yeah, it's it's the kind of thing I would do rather than you know, read a book or something productive for my mind, you know. Yeah. Just rough it with Hearthstone. It's books, right? <laughs> yeah, books. Books well, are for suckers. <laughs> that's the funny thing is, is that when I'm on my iPad, I'm either like watching Netflix or reading a book or more mm. recently reading a whole heck of a lot of comic books. Yeah. Well, I, I will say that I do actually have an iPad, but it's the original iPad 1. Okay, I, I picked it up for nothing because somebody didn't need it anymore. And I said, yep, yeah, I'll have that. And I have my Kindle on it so I can I can read and I have a Kindle, so I read on it, but it will not play Hearthstone. So if it did play Hearthstone, I'd probably play it more. But um, I ain't getting an iPad for a while. Uh, you know, but maybe I'll pick up another tablet. Who knows? But uh, I, I think that's probably the first app that would go on if I did get a new tablet. Good call. Good call. <sighs> well, I do not hate books, Midianet. Midianet. <laughs> I do not hate books. I love books. I'm a book nut, actually. But... Um, Again, reading a book and driving to work is not usually advisable, although I have books. seen people doing it. So, yeah. Love <laughs> oh, books. No. They, they all heard you say you hate books. No, oh, that's Midnight coming. knows. And uh, speaking of Midnight and uh, <laughs> Russians, let's talk about some other Blizzard news that, uh, that came out. There are going to be some uh, new Overwatch heroes that have been announced now. Oh, yeah. 
we knew there were going to be a lot more, but uh, now we now we know who two of them are. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is uh, let's go ahead and start with McCree, uh, who is a cowboy <laughs> man. Yes, uh, he looks he looks really cool. Um, I like him because he immediately reminds me of Red Dead Redemption. Totally, mm. absolutely, and uh, he's a cowboy. All right. I don't think you need to know anything else. He's in a shooter game and he's a cowboy. He's awesome. That's what you need to know. Mm -hmm. um, well, that the, and the other... fact that his uh, his belt buckle says it essentially stands for badass motherfucker on it. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> so first cool. I thought it was a Nightcrawler reference, but then I remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the the probably the bigger news of the two though is uh they also announced zarya which is a uh russian strong woman um she uh she's friggin tough looking she's got a giant gun she's like the heavy from team fortress but better um and I, I think it's cool because, you know, uh, Blizzard has been talking about how they want to broaden the scope of their audience. They did confirm, essentially, that this was a character that was attempting to do that, that not every character in their game needed to have a, you know, super tiny waist and big boobs and a big butt. Like, they have, it turns out there are other body types than that. What? Mm -hmm. I know. I don't mm -hmm. mean to blow everybody's mind, but uh, but yeah, there are. So I I think the design's really cool. I think she looks really cool. Um, we have a animated GIF of her in our show notes that I've been checking out. She looks <laughs> like she would just if she punched me, my head would just be gone. <laughs> like not even it, there wouldn't even be gore it would just look like a glitchy atari game she would hit me and the head would be gone there would just be shoulders at that point mm -hmm. so oh. you know that's what you're looking for in a blizzard uh, or an overwatch hero yeah i'm actually really looking forward to both of those uh, mccree very much so but uh zarya looks just so much fun to play i mean uh, of course, just like with all the different heroes in Overwatch, you know, entirely different play styles, but uh, both of them look like they have, you know, just a unique enough uh, voice to really kind of make a statement and be their own characters and just be a lot of fun. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Moo, where do you stand on uh, Overwatch? Um, I, well, we actually, the three of us, we uh, mm -hmm. played Overwatch at BlizzCon, didn't we? We did. And, um, yes, and I, but I was not on your team because there were seven of us. And <laughs> yeah, I got so, kicked to the second team, didn't I? And, so you and got our, to know what it was like to win. Yes. Yes, I, we <laughs> smoked you. We <laughs> smoked you many times. Um, it, uh, and I think you'll admit at the time, having that one guy that was on my team who just uh, who had obviously had been around the line about ten times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it it would I I did enjoy it. It was very that robot was really OP, which is what I was playing. That was good fun. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. It kind of I, and I've said this before. It tickled my Unreal Tournament uh, yeah. kind of itch that I haven't played Unreal Tournament for a long time, but I always really loved it. And it was that kind of gameplay. Um, I love these particular characters. The the McCree has a bit of the Jim Rainers happening. Would you agree? Oh yeah, it's a bit of the I, old. Yeah. A lot of that. Out of there, darling. You know, I'm here to save the day, kind of. James kind of Marston, Jim Rayner, yeah, yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah yep, yep. Space Cowboys. Nightcrawler, yeah, exactly. belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> Just mash all of your favorite things together and that's yeah. what you get. Um, weapon, weapon's a little bit boring. It's, you know, just a little gun and then the ability. That's not bad. That could do with a bit of, a, a bit of tweaking. And the roll ability, interesting. Um, I'd like to see some more things that he could do. Um, I like I think the quick fire that he weapon. has, though the the alternate fire, just that. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, that that's it's it's something interesting. I just think there's there's probably more they could do with him, um, yeah. more ability. Um, Zarya, oh, she is awesome. <laughs> um, number one, yes, it is lovely to see. It is really great to see some representation from all different types of things. You got you got big ladies, you got little ladies, you got, you know, the strong people, you got giant gorillas. Robots. Um, 
it, robots. For far too long, we have yeah. ignored robots and video mm-hmm. games. Finally, now we, have. we can we have. start to appreciate them. We have. And the other thing I like about Zarya as well is she hasn't got the whole skin tight bodysuit with specific oh, yeah. cutouts in strategic places. She's wearing body armor, and it's awesome. It's like really functional, and she looks like she can really kick your ass. I love it. It's it's great. And but she's got that look on her face like. She's still a good guy, you know. She, she's not a, she's not the typical stereotypical Russian, you know. I, I sit on you and, and, and you go, you go away, small scurrying boy, you know. She's, she, she's got that look like, yeah, I could take you, I could take you, if it's, I wanted to. In Soviet Russia, bothered. Overwatch plays you. Oh, yeah. he went there. Yeah, but yeah. um, Sorry. I, I really love it. She's a great character. I can't wait to see more. And see what else they're going to bring out. So, yeah, I, I'm actually. It made me think because we, we've got this. We've got this strong woman, you know, with this huge gun, and she looks like she's really kick ass. I love that character. I want to see a reversal, and I want to see a male character that is smaller and a little geekier. You know, somebody I could identify a little bit with. You know, maybe not so good <laughs> on the martial arts, but maybe has some some mental abilities, some kind of powers i don't know so, something that kind of goes against the grain like oh, literally that, that lightsaber kid just put him right in the game <laughs> <laughs> sure why not you know um, is uh yeah. press the right mouse button and he'll almost fall over yeah. the, <laughs> but send out like a wave of energy so jump. someone falls <laughs> yeah 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 um it's so cool. yeah I'd, I'd like to see a reversal of that and have some um have some uh yeah, have, have a bit of representation from everything and, and have a male character that isn't the big hulking brute in the armor um, and have somebody who's, you know, I, I think, it, actually, I think one of the one of the characters in there is already a, um, a mystic kind of uh, shaman-y, psionic-powered man, maybe. So maybe they've already thought of that idea. But, you know, it's, it's great. I'm, I'm liking how this is playing out so far. Yeah, he's a I Zen would... Master robot. I would like to see them uh, maybe branch out into, I mean, they've got, you know, let's build on gender and stuff like that. Let's maybe get away from regional stereotypes as well. I don't, I will say, like, I read it and I thought everything sounded cool. And then they're like, she's a Russian tough girl. And I was like, why is everybody like, (laughs) did did Rocky IV really leave that big of an impact where somebody's going to be just like this hulking behemoth, like they have to be Russian? And I don't know, maybe Russia thinks that's great. Like, maybe they're all for the stereotype. But, like, it'd be cool if, like, the next time they put a Russian in a game, like, he's a scrawny, nerdy dude that's real good at chess, you know? They like chess there. Well, they do. Well, that's a stereotype, too. Yeah, I'm just saying, go with a different stereotype. Except instead of chess pieces, they're just little shots of vodka? Like, he plays a little game (laughs) of chess, and giant uh, manifestations of the chess pieces come to life and beat up his enemies for him. So, like, Persona in Russian. Yeah. Like, knight! Oh, yeah. It's It's like body armor, just... That could be kind of cool. Like you run around, he's like, yeah, no, you run around, he's uh, you know like little twiggy nerdy guy. Use the different abilities, and then it 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 pops out the moves, and he's like inside it like psionically or something. Yeah, yeah, that could be cool. Yeah, they haven't done that. Yeah, I mean, you've got look. They have now really hit strong Russian people. Like that has happened a lot. Mm -hmm. That's. Thanks to Punch Out, we've already taken care of uh, drinking. They've got that part of Russia covered. <laughs> so now it's time to get into their love for chess. Like okay. that's the uh, only that's the new frontier. That's the that's the only territory we have left for this stereotype. So in Rocky Eight, when we go against the new Russian threat, <laughs> uh, is there a montage of them actually just playing chess? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Like a robot of his trainer pops up and is like, you can't play chess with him, Rock. You're an idiot. (laughs) I don't know. I'm pretty good at chess. You know, I move the pieces all around and I'm going to get them on the corner. That's checkers, Rock. No, he he kings me and then I'm going to be able to move back and forward. That's checkers. You're going to be in trouble and then you're going to say sorry unless you learn the right game. 
Be like, king me, Nick. Uh, there's the rails. Over that way. I would watch that movie, for the record. He's wondering we should make that, that movie. Uh, so, speaking of new heroes and things, uh, there's a new one coming to Heroes of the Storm. The already announced but much anticipated Sylvanas! Yay. I'm sorry, I am shocked that somebody has already linked a picture of Rocky Balboa versus Bobby Fischer. Somebody has already <laughs> done this, Ben! Oh my god. All avenues have already... <laughs> okay, oh. game over. <laughs> It's already been explored. It's already happened. <laughs> Jeez, we might as well just all go home. Everything has been done. Oh, they give him in a costume, might have it. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh my. I'm pretty gosh. sure they didn't just whip that up right now. Yeah. All right. Well, all right. I guess you can't do chess. I guess nothing is original anymore. Yeah, that's already right. been beaten to death. So good. Good. Let's talk about Sylvanas, Ben. Yeah, she's uh, she's in it. She she's gonna be in Heroes. I'm yeah. excited. She's Me a hero too. I might play. Why are you laughing, Ben? I might play as Sylvanas. <laughs> no, Why are you laughing? Because you play as Tassadar. I do play as Tassadar. Tassadar is a fantastic. He's the main character of the game. <laughs> but I might take a break every now and then and play as Sylvanas. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> And it came with a really cool trailer. I think everybody should check that out. It actually gives a pretty decent history of her. And hey, guess what? I'm pretty sure that Blood Elf, or I guess it would be High Elf Sylvanas, is going to be a skin for her. Oh, who'd have Considering thought? how prevalent she is in the <laughs> uh, trailer for that. Yeah, I really think so, too. Um, it looks cool. I'm excited. Uh, Moo, are you actually in the uh, Heroes of the Storm beta? I am. But I, <laughs> I I played half of the intro tutorial and uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Right. I think oh, I, uh, no. when 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 did when did the beta come out? It was um, like gosh, oh, it was a long time ago. Almost it might have even been before. Is it almost about a year ago know. now? Something yeah, like it's been a while. I I I kind of haven't touched it since then. It's been sitting on my launcher and meh. I, I don't know. I, I tried it. You know what the problem was when I first tried it is that I played Diablo at the time a lot. Uh, and all the controls are reversed. And so I played it and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm <laughs> shooting and I don't want to shoot. And Rainer keeps yelling at me that I don't need to. Oh, I'm so I'm going back to Diablo. And so I did. And I've never been back. <laughs> so I, I should probably try it. But it, I don't know. It's that League of Legends um, push the lanes team thing. It's never really been my kind of game. Um, I should probably give it a bit more of a go, but it's it's a kind of thing where if I had Overwatch and Heroes of the Storm on my launcher, I would probably always go for Overwatch, just because that's where I feel more comfortable. I so. might do the same, but I don't that's... have Overwatch on my launcher yet. Yeah, mm. that's no, tough. Well. Like, Heroes yeah. is a ton of fun, especially with friends. I can see where mm -hmm. Overwatch is way more fun with friends. <laughs> It is. Yes. I, like, I think they're going to actually scratch very similar itches. One is going to be a little bit more tactical. The other is going to be a bit more twitchy, you know, twitch reaction. And I, I am definitely going to play both, but uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it works. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the things we have gotten in the habit of doing is playing Heroes of the Storm when we go into our post show here, and I love it. I think it's Me some too. of the most fun I've had, but once we all have Overwatch, I can easily see that maybe taking its place, so uh, yeah. we'll, we'll have to see how that goes, but uh, I'm excited about Sylvanas being in the game. I will still play Taskar. Oh, totally. Yeah. I'm excited that there are cool new heroes that other people can play while I play Taskar. <laughs> Yeah, because you want to see her, you don't want to actually control her because you're 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 there for the main character, we're there for the supporting characters. Yeah. And so here's what you do, Moo. I want you to finish the tutorial. Uh -huh. I want you to select Tassadar, play <laughs> the game the way it's meant to be played. Experience Ooh. the game proper, play Tassadar. Then find a different hero that you like. And start playing that, and mm -hmm. then you can play with us. Mm 
Mm. Well, it, it's one of these things where at the time when I was playing, I think you were limited to only a very couple of, like, only a few heroes. And Tassadar at the time wasn't one of them. And I, Mark Onan can tell you this. When, when we were at BlizzCon and we were watching the, the movie theatre in, in the atmosphere and we were watching the Legacy of the Void trailer, mm-hmm. I was weeping. I was literally over the back of the seat in front my jaw on the ground and weeping it was i've been waiting i'm a protoss guy um and uh i if i can play protoss that's going to be a good thing so i'm I'm going to have to do that if i'm understanding you correct you have already accepted tassadar as your personal hero and savior i have he's shown me the way (laughs) i've sought salvation through tassadar all right and tassadar shall protect you at while also putting a little bubble on the ground that damages minions. <laughs> awesome. Yes, I, I, I will have to give that a go, I think. It, it's, I'll just have to go back and download it again because I actually think I removed it from my computer because I was looking for some extra space. So I will accept your challenge, sir. Sounds good. And reinstall. Right. Okay, well, with that, let's go ahead and take a seat at the round table. Shut it! Round table. Welcome to the round table where we discuss in depth the issues that mean the most to us, the players. This week's round table topic is all about content. Which, I mean, if you really want to think about it, that's what most of the round table topics are about. But great. Yeah, cool. Uh, content. Content. Woo. Um, to be a bit more I'm specific. I'm pro content, Ben. I'm uh, pro content. How do you feel too. about content? Yeah, definitely. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Okay. Moo, how do you feel about content? Oh, I'm at least one and a half thumbs up on content. Um, <laughs> good content. What, where, have, you don't have a game without content, do you? Of any this kind. Is pretty much. It's true. All yeah, right, everybody. True. Thanks. Um, <laughs> that's the round that's table. Like, We've determined uh, content. content. Good. good. Content is good. If we're talking about the, the specific question, no piece of content, or the specific statement, no piece mm-hmm. of content is bad, I would... Time. Time is the thing here. Um, anytime we have a new patch, generally, we have some form of content, whether it's a garrison selfie camera mission or whether it's a whole new quest hub that they cut out because of lack of time, which I'm just just a little bit bitter about. Um, I was looking forward to Iron Docks, uh, the, the, the quest hubbing down there and that sort of pushing on of the story. Um, content is good, but... If it doesn't, if if there's not enough of it, or it's it's not something that is um, compelling enough, you're going to run out of it very quickly. Something that is compelling and you want to go back and do all the time, it lasts longer and feels better, because you feel like you're getting. I shouldn't say value for money because we're always paying the same amount of money, but you feel like you're getting value for the time that you're putting into it. And if it's not great content, it's still good to have it there, but you tend to. You, you 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 use it up. You mentally use it up a lot quicker, and then you're left with less that you feel like you can do. And yeah, I know there's heaps of stuff you can do in game. You can go back and run over. There's a whole litany of stuff you can go and do. But people like new things, and if you burn through that new stuff really quickly and it doesn't feel so great, then you're left wanting something else, and that's not a great feel. But don't you think ultimately it's better that it exists than to not exist? Like, I mean, do you? So you're you're definitely sad Iron Docks didn't get added to the game, and I oh, yeah. I would agree with that. Like if I had my choice, if again this is actually kind of goes back to are you pro content or anti content? If someone said, Hey John, <laughs> would you have liked to have had this in here? The answer would be yeah, of of course I would. I'd much rather mm. have it in there. But of course. in a world where it wasn't ready and it didn't make the cut, like do you would you really rather say, oh, well we should probably just not have anything then? Um, no. No, because even even if you've only got a little content, any additional content is is good. Um, I think where the the nuance comes in, where people feel, and I'm not saying this for me specifically, but people, I'm going to use that amorphous term, people. <laughs> when people, you know, people, um, when they feel that something has been put in and time has been spent on it at the expense of something that they feel may have been better to have had time put into it then they will feel uh what's the word cheated i suppose yep 
Yeah, it's it's no, it's the don't say chip. That's yeah, not I know. I well, forgot I that that's no, not no, acceptable no, no. anymore. I, yeah, I, I won't. Oh, what's the term? I, I guess it's it's a syndrome called "Why wasn't I consulted?" syndrome. And, it, <laughs> and it, seriously, that's that's basically what it's called. People feel angry and mm-hmm. and bitter because they feel that their priority or they they a decision was made that they do not agree with. And even though they really have no input on that decision, ultimately, they feel cheated in some way that the decision didn't go their way. And I, I, oh, I don't know. I don't want to say I'm arrogant enough to say I'm above all of that. Um, I would still <laughs> love Iron Docks, but I know why it wasn't put in. And yeah, I'm disappointed, but that disappointment isn't disappointment. Oh, bloody bitch, you didn't put in the stuff I want. It's... It's a shame that it wasn't ready on time, and I wish it could have been. But, you know, stuff happens, and we'll just wait for it next patch. Yeah, I mean, that's a very practical way to look at it. And yeah. uh, I, I think you're right. I think you're hitting on something that is a very interesting idea, which is this idea of people in general, again, to use that term, have a tendency to say, like, hey, Blizzard, I want you to make the content that I want you to make. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. not everybody plays WoW the same way. I mean, we can't even agree between the three of us on how much we like Hearthstone. Uh, We know how much we like it, but we think Mm -hmm. that the other people, you know, perhaps are not correct, especially Ben. And so it's one of those things where everybody's going to have different tastes. Like, the way I play WoW is very different from how Ben plays WoW. I'm sure it's very different from how you play WoW. So there's going to be content that gets released that's going to speak to one person more than the other. You know, just last week, I was way into 6.1. Ben was a little meh on it. Um, But it was a patch that ended up adding incentive to do the things that I like to do in WoW, Mm -hmm. whereas for other people, that might not be the case. Um, Ben, what are are your thoughts? This was kind of your baby as far as the topic, like... (laughs) I know I was going to intro it and actually like jump off, and I had a lot to say too. <laughs> we're hey, no, no, we're that's, done. That's good. You can that's go good. home. You're um, already home. It, you know, Moo, you pretty much kind of hit it right on the head where I wanted to take this, and that is that you know even if there's content in the game, it might not be specifically what you want, but it keeps all those other people in the game who do want that content. Um, mm. I think that the the absolute best example of this is uh, pet battles. Because, I mean, it's something that I, I like, you know, quite a bit. I do another show about it. Like, that's what we talk about is pet battles. <laughs> um, except the most recent episode, Eludra goes a little off the topic quite a bu- uh, bit, but long story. Anyways, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I would, uh, you know, click on the, the forum post and everything where so many people were saying how this is horrible. I don't want this. This isn't what I want in the game. Why are you taking raids away in order to, to do this? And mm. It's that whole concept that kind of, you know, is pervasive through a lot, uh, a lot of the, the WoW community. Um, Pet Battles is in there, and because they nerfed a lot of the content in 6.1, like, you know, the, the menagerie quests and everything like that, I'm finding out from more and more people who are saying, like, hey, I'm just getting into this. Uh, like uh, last week, Morgrim, or Brian, he was, um, you know, just really getting into pet battles for the first time, really. Uh, we, we get lots of emails on battle pets about, like, hey, I'm just starting out, or I'm available to do this now, and everything. And I'm sure there's, you know, some hardcore raiders out there who think that it's just an absolute waste of time because it's not the game that they play. But you know yeah. what? It brings people into the game. It makes them, you know, subscribe. It makes them want to play. And the more people that we have actually playing this game, the better it is for everybody else. Just like when they add new Ashran content or just PvP in general. It's something that I don't really care about. And, I mean, it, it it's fun every now and then. But that's not the game that I play. But I appreciate mm. that it's in there for those other people who do want it. And to this point, Ben, um, I want to say while we're talking about it, because you just reminded me, I'm going to make a liar of myself, I did do something else in WoW this week. I got my pet menagerie. All right, good job. Ah. (laughs) They did make those fights a lot easier. I did all this prep. I read about the strategies (laughs) for the fights. I'm like, 
all right, I gotta, I gotta kill this carrot. This carrot's gotta <laughs> die. This, this carrot exists to make my life a nightmare, and I'm gonna have to end it. So I got all these pets ready that could counter his abilities, and I'm like, all right, we're good. And then I like killed him in like four moves, and I was like, okay, I'm probably the greatest <laughs> pet bat <battler> ever. Um, <laughs> I should probably retire while I'm on top. So I I got my pet menagerie, and it was. It was enough to where, like, I unlocked enough stuff to where now I feel like I would actually enjoy going into my garrison and doing the daily fight and getting some of those tokens and maybe getting some items to upgrade my pets and and stuff like that. And so now the pets are no longer just something with a big gold sign attached to it where I'm like, oh, yeah, I could sell this for a lot of gold. Great. Uh, Now I'm actually excited about getting some i'm gonna go after the anubisith idol because i know that that's the oh yeah i don't know it was the holy grail or something Still so it, it's i great used to have one i sold it now i'll go get another one so yeah. Yeah. uh mm. yeah so to your point like had 6.1 not kind of brought that back into focus to some degree i probably would never have touched pet, pet battles this expansion i probably never would have gotten there but I did, because that's the content that got a little attention this expansion. It, it, or this not, patch, I should say. Not, not to go like too deep into the pet battle rabbit hole. Um, hey, everybody, there's a really quick quest that will give you a stone that turns any one of your pets into a level 25. So you have a level 25 pet. You go up to the pet menagerie, you get the quest, you walk over to your mine, you click a thing, you walk back to the menagerie, boom, that's it. That's all. Then you have a level 25 pet. This is true. Yeah, um, I might have to look into this. No, oh, totally. It, it I, helps. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not a pet battler. It's it's one of these things where, uh, I I agree with uh, your, your whole thing there about you know the pet battle content and all that. I agree with you, but from the opposite perspective, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. So I'm not a pet battler. I'm not even really a pet collector. I, I but I appreciate that they're in there and that they're a thing that people like to do. And I don't think that's something that should go just because it's not something that I do. Um, my wife loves pet battles, and that's that's great. It's just not my. It's not really, and has never really been my thing. But mm-hmm. I don't begrudge it being there in place of something else that perhaps I might enjoy more, um, because I get that this is a game for everybody, and you know everybody gets their little turn at having something special for them. You know, and I, I think that's a good thing. I think pet battles in game is a good thing, and I don't feel that. I also feel that the 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 team that does pet battles is not the same one that is tuning raid content. Yes. And so this this whole thing of, oh, they're, they're putting in pet battles, and why aren't they putting more... What the heck, Liz? Why aren't you putting more into raids? Well, it's different teams. I mean, you're not going to get the pet battle team going on to the raids and, well, you know, we're going to tune this boss and do you know, do this fight and all of this kind of stuff. It just it doesn't work that way, and I don't think people get that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, one of the, the newest additions to 6.1 that, um, you know, got a lot of flack is the selfie camera. I will be the first to admit, and I think I kind of said this earlier, but it is the dumbest thing in game. Absolutely dumbest thing in game. And I love it. It is yep. just so much stupid fun. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. as soon as I got it, I got out of my monk first. And, you know, I, I'm like, okay, well, let's see what this is all about. And then all of a sudden, you know, it has the, the, the camera angle and center face. She's just making stupid, like, rah, faces and everything. And I'm like, this is amazing. Absolutely amazing. And, the fact that Twitter integration was actually put into WoW and everything is added just, you know, another level of dumb fun, you know, and Mm -hmm. uh, my Twitter feed hasn't been, you know, exploding too much of uh, just screenshots of everything. It's just, you know, a little bit more, but even so, if I see there's a screenshot, I can scroll past it. But um, Mm -hmm. I mean, just think about it. People will complain about the selfie camera because, uh, you know, oh, well, it takes away from this part and this part. It's like, that's kind of a, a UI thing. You know, that's what what the Twitter thing was. It's a UI thing. Again, you're, you know, <laughs> Ian Hazakostas isn't the one who's programming out, uh, okay, now we need to make this uh, tweet go here and connect it this way. And, I mean, they're entirely different areas. So the fact that they're able to put I- just this stupid stuff in game is... It's so great, in my opinion. Actually, having met Ian and having spoken to him at length about various other things, he's a smart guy. And you know what? 
he, he, he's one of these guys that you, you can see his brain is always working. Whenever you look at him, you can see he's, he's always got something going on in his brain, always working. It wouldn't surprise me if he did have some input onto this, you know, because that's just kind of the guy that he is. Um, but, yeah, it, it's one of these things that, that, that uh, I looked at the camera angle and I used to work in um, for a company that did 3D animation and, and post-production and all that kind of stuff. Those kind of things where you change the camera angle and you and you make a new animation, that kind of stuff, it the resources for that aren't huge. Like obviously they've put quite a bit of time and work into it, but it's not the kind of thing that's going to take away another raid, even if the teams were the same. So it's dumb fun stuff. I mean, my, my wife and I, she got the selfie camera. We went down to the Dark Moon Fair, and we must have spent an hour and a half just <laughs> dinking around with that camera. In front of the tour and chieftain, and her her character would pull a face, and then I'd I'd pull a pose behind her, and we would take a shot, and they were like, "Oh, I'm photo bombing you." We had tears in her <laughs> eyes. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was the most fun, and it's good. But fun is what you aim to have, and anything that adds a little bit more fun in is good. So mm -hmm. I'm pro selfie. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, John, what content is in game that you don't like, that you don't really want, but I mean, is it something that you think could actually be taken out of the game or that it was add, added uh, in kind of a stupid decision? Well, Ben, it's been around since vanilla, and uh, I think we could probably get rid of the gnomes, and I'd, <laughs> I'd be okay. I think, we could, I think we could come together, and I think we could get over it um, as a loss. I know it would affect some people. Quite, quite literally, because they're really short. You know, you'd it, it would bother <laughs> us for a short period of time. It'd so be a tiny change. It's a problem that's been <laughs> underfoot for a while? It requires some small oh, adjustment. <laughs> Remember, guys, I think we've John stretched that said one that. as far as it'll go. John said it. <laughs> no, seriously, though, is there any sort of content that you think is just completely wasted that we don't need? I, I think that... Battlegrounds and Arena are <laughs> a great big waste of time. Um, I, okay, so I'm not much of a PvPer, which I feel weird saying because I, that's how I started. Mm -hmm. Like That was one of the very early draws to WoW for me. I wish there was a deathmatch, a real deathmatch uh, PvP Battleground. I, I could get into that. I think all this capture the flag, hold this node, do this thing walk next to a mine cart like all that bullshit is stupid i i don't like it it actually actively pushes me away from pvp mm -hmm. like i feel like pvp should be i'm gonna go kill that guy and then you do it um i kind of give a little bit of a pass to capture the flag because i think capture the flag can be okay but that's you know one other battleground map um so it i it's not my thing, but I also understand that it is a huge thing to a ton of the player base, so I would never suggest that it legitimately go away. I just personally think that that part of the game is uh, is dumb. Yeah. Now, Mugiver, kind of same question. Is there something that you don't do that you don't enjoy that, you know, there's a lot of time and effort and resources actually put into? Um... But I've got to agree with John in that Battlegrounds, I don't dislike Battlegrounds. I'm not a huge PvPer. I like the occasional Battleground. I like the ones where you have a huge army on each side. Um, Wintergrass, I've said this many times, Wintergrass was my ultimate favourite Battleground forever. We'll love it forever. We're, we're besties. Um, Which version of I it, like, though? like the one that took seven days or the current incarnation where you play for ten minutes and then the Alliance wins? Ah, well, back when it was... Uh, I'm going to be all hipster, and back in Wrath, I, I was a huge uh, Wintergrass fan. Oh, Wintergrass. I'm thinking of Alterac. Yeah, not, yeah. not <laughs> Alterac Valley. No, no, no. No. But I do, I do like that whole there's more things to do in a battleground than just race to the other end and kill the boss kind of deal. Um, I like that feel of it being, you know, it's a battle. You're actually attacking a fortress. I love the siege weaponry, all that kind of stuff. Um, the whole, I know what will destroy these... Frost wall, uh, these these war song encroaching on our territory. Territory. Let's run into their base and pinch their flag and run it back to our base. That'll <laughs> stop them. I I don't get that. It's not and a Rathi Basin as well. I've never liked a Rathi Basin. Let me stand around here and pretend that we're gathering stuff 
<laughs> hey guys, I'm all my own here. The other five team are coming down. Uh, oh, I'm dead. You know that that doesn't appeal to me at all. Now so they have all. I, yeah, I'm, I I would have liked to have seen when they because they're basically adding like two or three battlegrounds per expansion at least, mm -hmm. um, and in some of them they were adding the mid expansion as well. And I feel like at the moment we've got too many different battlegrounds, and I would like to see them um, cut down a little bit. Perhaps the alt hired. And the the titles and achievements that you get with those, you know, they could be retired as well. Made feats feats of strength and and that sort of thing. And if you really must have a capture the flag battleground, let's retire Warsong Gulch and make a new one. You know, something that's more to do with the current content because Warsong Gulch is supposed to be vanilla era um, in the um, oh, what's that big old forest. I can't think of the name uh, of it. Ashen? I'm terrible with names. Or Ashenvale. Uh, yeah, Ashenvale. It's supposed to be in the middle of Ashenvale Forest. And I think, as we've seen, the Horde have pretty much comprehensively won that. So let's retire that battleground and say, okay, that battleground is no longer relevant because the Horde won. And in Arathi Basin, let's say, okay, well, the Alliance won that. So, you know, they hold the Arathi Basin now. And let's make another resource capture battleground that's more with the current content it's just you know that but yeah I'd, I'd like to see the older ones retired and perhaps be replaced with something newer now question for you um i actually i i kind of agree with you on that i like the idea of you know kind of making the story go along with the battlegrounds and everything mm. um you know it gives new game types to you know different types of map and everything like that and it it it, it broadens it quite a bit now mm. Would you be okay if there's more of like an update to the current map to reflect more of uh, what's going on lore-wise with it, but like still kept um, in the game? Well, I think in in the case of places like Warsong Gulch and Arathi Basin, I'm going to keep coming back to those because I don't like them. Um, <laughs> Alterac Valley, I really don't have a problem with too much. Um, but those two, just when you go into them, you realize even just the loading screens and then the graphics in the actual zone and how they're laid out, you can see how old they are. You can see how much they've dated. And I would just like to see them not so much refreshed, but make a new story. If you want to have a capture the, capture the flag or capture the resources battleground, make it in a whole new place. You know, Fix up all of those little things in the map where there's some kind of advantage to one side or the other. Oh, for goodness sake, my neighbor's blowing their horn. <laughs> Sorry it's about fine. that. No um, so any any time that you, you where where they have the ability to improve the map to remove those kind of things that give one side an advantage or another, make that part of the law. Say, well. Sorry, guys, the Warsong won Warsong Gulch. That's it. We better go home now and find a new battle battleground to go into. Um, just redo it. Redo it from brand new. Make it new. Make it fresh. Give it the new graphics. Um, yeah, just do, do it. Do it over. Make a whole new thing. I kind of like that idea. John, mm. would it at least get you into the content to see it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see, and that's why I don't think they should change it. I think, I'm going to say flat out, I think that changing the battlegrounds to go with lore is a bad idea, because to me that just reinforces the idea that lore has any importance whatsoever on the PvP content, which is crap. That It doesn't. Mm. And it shouldn't. Because every time Blizzard tries to justify PvP by well, in the lore, no, there is no PvP lore. We, me holding this flag does not matter in the grand scheme of WoW lore. The fact that we took their flag three times, like, it was an epic battle. They took our flag three times. We were very distraught. And Can you imagine like, if that's how uh, Siege of Orgrimmar ended? They took our flag three times. I give up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> We're going to keep fighting, but we had this really nice flag, and they took it from us. Uh, we got it back. They took it from us again. We got it back. They took, us, they took it again, and we just said we're done with the whole thing. <laughs> um, well, I, I, would, I would counter that by saying that to a true hardcore PvPer, they don't care about the graphics. They don't care about the mm -hmm. story. They just want to win Exactly. They don't care what it looks like, so well, why not change it? Well, no, but that's what I mean. They don't care about the lore, but they do care about their map. 
Like, they have spent all this time learning that map and coming up with the best strategies and how they're going to play it. And if you take that away from them or change that, you are dealing with some seriously pissed off PvPers. And PvPers will kill a man. Like, yeah. that's what they're Literally. all about. It they, is what they're all they about. They will just do it. They don't care. They think they get honor points for it. That's what the media tells me. So, uh, I, I just think that they that is something that they would care about. So, I don't care. Like, if they go in and they change Warsong Gulch or retire it, I don't care. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. But if I'm the kind of person who's crazy into Warsong Gulch and runs it every day and doesn't care that it's the same map every single time because I've, you know, my whole job is to master it and they mess with that, I care very much at that point. So I think that it would only be hurting the player base that cares about it if they went in and messed with these things. Yeah. Well, I, I guess it's one of these things where once the resources have been spent and something's in the game, you may as well just leave it there unless it's more advantageous to remove it. And I can't think of many circumstances where the energy to remove something from the game is worth it. Just cataclysm. In most cases. Well, <laughs> yeah. Slightly different circumstances. I know, there. I know. I'm um, totally kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess this is the thing, is that the only argument you can make is, well, they shouldn't have spent time on that, but they have now and it's in the game, so... Mm -hmm kind of doesn't matter anymore you know and i mean across but, the board we're not pvpers so of course it doesn't mean that much to us like we're mm. they can do whatever they want to pvp they can mm. give them 80 new maps they can give them no new maps they can take yeah. some away they can change the art they can do whatever it's not going to bother me any the only time it ever bothers me is when they make me have to go in for an achievement or for some part of a legendary quest or something like that and then i get annoyed because now i have to go participate in their part of the game <laughs> that i want nothing to do with and they don't um, want us in there they yeah and they don't want us in there either so it's advantageous for everybody to just build the wall and i know blizzard wants to encourage people to try it because the whole idea is you don't, well, maybe you will like it. You know, I mean, we've had Jocelyn on the show a bunch, and, and she's taken to PvP in a real big way. I mean, she spoke about it so passionately that I gave PvP a try and got back into it before I realized I don't think my monk is meant to PvP. Rogue, yes. Monk, no. Yeah. So, hmm. uh, it, it's one of those things where I know they want to encourage players to join, but I think at a certain point, too, they also have to say, well, you know, look, maybe we are talking about a limited player base. Let's build something that they're going to really like, and then let's build other things that the other player base is really going to like. But all that content, kind of to tie it back to the original topic, can't come out at once. Mm -hmm. They can't build everything at the same time. There's going to be a mm -hmm. time where it's, Here's your two new battlegrounds and maybe a couple other things. That's not going to be a very exciting patch for me. But it's going to be a very exciting patch for some people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so to finish off, um, even if the content isn't in there and it's made specifically for you, don't knock it. It's there for someone. And you know what? As long as someone's happy with it, everybody wins. Mm. So so take a selfie uh, with your selfie cam and feel proud. Yep, while you're raiding, while you're PvPing, <laughs> while you're pet battling, whatever. Just have fun. Do it in front of a minor lore character and make a spoiler comment about a book he was in. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah, didn't you say, uh, hey, I found Ronan. Yeah, I found Ronan. I had to turn on the death filter. <laughs> but I found him. That's great. Uh, well, uh, with that, let's go ahead and listen to some Celebrity Murloc Theater. Celebrity Murloc Theater. <laughs> Celebrity Murloc Theater, folks. Guess what? We have a submission this week. But in case you don't remember what this is, there's three types. The first type of Celebrity Murloc Theater is someone making the sound of a Murloc, like Moogiver's going to do right now. 
I sorry, I was distracted by the chat room. What did you nope, say? I've never. <laughs> nope, that's not what Murlocs do. That that's not like what Murlocs yeah. do. Do a Murloc. That's yes, what Murlocs do. Yes, exactly. That's what. Yep, uh, the second uh, type is someone who is, you know, doing an impersonation of a celebrity, doing an impersonation of a murloc, like John's going to do right now. Oh, Margol! Gargol! Gargol! Margol! Gargol! Gargol! Hargol! That was Jimmy Stewart as a murloc. I was going to guess either him or Don Knotts. I go with... Oh, Margol! Gargol! (laughs) It's Don Knotts. (laughs) That's more Don Knotts, yeah. Okay, it's perfect. The same thing, but higher pitched and more of a brand. <laughs> it, it works. Um, the last bit is, you know, taking a you know bit of a song or a movie or TV show or something like that and throwing in Murlocs, either yourself doing it, a friend doing it, or the actual sound file itself. Or just taking a scripted section and performing it all yourself like this next clip does. So thank you very much, Dora Lee, from uh, Spectacular Death on Lelaine uh, U.S. Alliance. Sure, those are words. <coughs> what? <coughs> I have no quarrel with you, good sir knight, but I must cross this bridge. <coughs> I command you, as king of the Britons, to stand aside. <coughs> So be it. <coughs> now stand aside, worthy adversary. <coughs> or scratch your arms off. <coughs> well, what's that then? <coughs> you liar. <coughs> <coughs> Victory is mine. We thank you, Lord. Ah! That is my- what? Ah! You are indeed brave, Sir Knight, but the fight is mine. Ah! Look, you, you've got no arms left. I like that the epic battle sound just sounded like a murloc, like with a wooden spoon and a pan, just like. Bah, bah. Oh, <laughs> so that was it just great. went through my head every single time. Absolutely great! Thank you very much, Dorley or Dorle or whoever it's said said because I can't talk. Said, said, and got, a, <laughs> and got an accent got while we were talking. But uh, that was Murgle, great. Murgle, 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 Murgle. Gurgle, 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 gurgle. That's my celebrity. I'm um, doing Ben, Ben's voice as a murloc. Uh, it starts out like a normal murloc, like murgle, gurgle, gurgle, and then all of a sudden it gets an accent for no reason. So it's murgle, gurgle, gurgle, gargle, 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 yeah. murgle. Totally not used to listening to myself. It it screw me up so much. I know it's giving you accents. It's pretty exciting. So John, why is it important that people send in celebrity murloc theaters? Well, for every celebrity uh, Murloc theater that we do a, a week. No, that's wrong. Hold on. <laughs> I started that off incorrect. <laughs> Let's reverse that and try it again. Okay. So, hi, Ben. Hi, John. Let me tell you about Celebrity Murloc Theater and why it's great. Okay. Celebrity Murloc Theaters are great because every episode we do this year that features a Celebrity Murloc Theater sent in by a listener, uh, we are going to donate money to Child's Play. Uh, Ro started us off on this course saying that for every episode he would donate $2, and then both you and I joined him and said we would match his donation and then we've had all sorts of listeners join in so there's going to be a lot of money uh spread around to child's play charity at the end of the year we're Mm -hmm. very excited so you should send celebrity murloc theaters to us yep record them send them in we'll play them and we'll love them yes and we'll critique your foley work (laughs) but you know lovingly because that was awesome i liked it yeah uh, so with that, I gotta say, you know what would be awesome, John? Uh, reading listener email. No, not doing that because I scrolled <laughs> up and saw that it got cut. <laughs> this is how the sausage is made, folks. 
<laughs> hey, John, why don't you go ahead and read that listener email? And I wasn't where I should have been in the show notes. Why don't you go ahead and read that email then? Hey, everybody. Uh, listener feedback is mm. happening suddenly because I mentioned it. So we're going to read it real quick because Ben didn't want to. We're running a little uh. long. Hi, team. After recently getting my 11th tune to 100 and now having 11 level 3 garrisons, I am going insane! I can't manage them all. Well, I can, but it takes nearly three hours before I can do anything else. So I'm going to leave Draenor and start a level 1. Relax and play through those lovely zones I have not seen for many a year, like Elwyn Forest, the area around Ironforge. See, I can't even remember what it's called. Uh, Red Rock Mountain, etc., etc. I'm so stressed with all my garrisons, that is what I'm gonna do. Loving the show as always. Galeran on the Alliance, who is a Night Elf Druid. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's a smart thing. That's too many garrisons to manage. Yeah. It will make you go crazy. It's like every garrison you get is owning your own franchise. And uh, <laughs> sometimes you got to let them just manage themselves. Yep, pretty much. That's what followers are for, right? That's right. Yeah, exactly. So thank you very much. For- <laughs> he sent it a long time ago. Yeah. Thank you for when you sent it. <laughs> yeah, we, we appreciate it. it. Yeah. Sorry we couldn't ben get it. Ben kept putting it off. He tried to cut it. Did you hear? You can thank <laughs> me for reading your email because Ben said no cutting and i said exactly no cutting we're reading it and well it i thought that uh, you know there's more discussion that we could pull from it but unfortunately uh we don't have time so john ben i'm wearing a t-shirt are you wearing a t-shirt it's a private question for another time well actually <laughs> um because you can see both of us on camera i know that you are and i know that i am however mugiver are you wearing a t-shirt I don't know, Ben. Am I? I don't think so. Listen, Mugai. Well, actually, I am, and it's damn hot in here. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're Mugaiver. coming out of summer. Oh, that's right. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, I mean, but the cool thing about Australia summer is it's also kind of our summer, because this is when we can go outside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because when it becomes actually our summer, we, we die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yep. It just turns well. into fire. MacGyver, now you are uh, spectacularly good at constructing items out of, you know, found everyday objects. And uh, I would even venture a guess that using only a paper clip, a toothbrush, and a can of silly string, you could craft yourself a t-shirt. Don't you think you could probably do that? Well, you know what, John? I am sure that I could craft myself a t-shirt, but it wouldn't be as awesome as the Azeroth Roundtable t-shirt, available from SlashLoot.com. That's right. You don't have to go to all that trouble. You just need to get it on a computer or an iPhone, some sort of internet-capable device. Go over to SlashLoot.com, click on Podcasts, find the Azeroth Roundtable t-shirt. It's near the top. We start our show with an A, so, you know, we're up there. Yep and uh, buy a t-shirt. Yep. And, and you wouldn't have all that tape and, and, and paper clips sticking into you and everything. It'd be a lot more comfortable. <laughs> yeah, it's a comfortable shirt. Uh-huh. Ow. <laughs> I need to do that right now. <laughs> so, if you already have an Azeroth Roundtable shirt and you want some matching accessories, go to geekasylum.etsy.com and you can find yourself an Azeroth Roundtable necklace or keychain. It has our favorite Murloc with the mic art on it. I like it. I feel like you're hitting all the talking points, and we're the ones who come up with the talking points. So I find it strange. Like you're hitting, I don't know. It's almost like we got a memo saying, make sure you acknowledge that his name's Art. <laughs> make sure you mention that it's a keychain <laughs> and a pendant. It's like there's, I don't know. You know how on podcasts you can hear the ads they do? And you, if you listen to a lot of podcasts, you notice that people are saying the same things, and you know they just had to have gotten a memo that said, make sure you talk about X, Y, and Z. Yeah, it's called copy. It's, you yeah. have a written copy that you have to actually read and make sure you hit certain things. You can add yes. most of it. but I, I feel like you have that, but it's for our own products. So I it don't makes have me it, though, which is great. That we don't have it. I know we don't <laughs> have it, because I know you didn't write it, and I didn't write it. 
Look, you're just that consistent, guys. I try. You're just what that we've consistent. determined is that everybody needs to jazz up their shirts, their necks, and their keys. Mm-hmm. And Azeroth Roundtable is more than happy to help you do that. Very Check much. out our loot. You can find links on our website, AzerothRoundtable.com. Mm-hmm. So you can also I... follow us on Twitter at AzerothRT. <laughs> If you want to email us, you can send an email to azerothroundtable at gmail.com. We'll read them eventually, unless Ben tries to cut them. But I got your back. <laughs> also, you should note that our intro contains music from Volatile Reaction by Kevin McLeod. And if you want to hear more of his music, you can find it at incompitech.com. And of course, all of our episodes so are available excited. on azerothroundtable.com, <laughs> as well as iTunes and Stitcher. We'd also like to thank <laughs> Alpha Geek Radio. Yep, you can listen live on Alpha Geek Radio at tunein.alphageekradio.com. Jeez, John. <laughs> so, MacGyver, how can people find you? I, <clears throat> <laughs> if you... If you... Uh, squirrel. If you want to find me, you can find me bi-weekly on the Chaos Portal podcast. I... Along with my co-hosts, Alice and Sarah Gosa, we go through the WoW forums and other places. We find the stuff that the people are talking about, and we deconstruct it, throw it back together, see what sticks, and just discuss it among ourselves and with a guest more often than not. And we have good times, and we come up with new stuff, and, and hopefully there's a little bit, of, uh, little bit of advice, a bit of advice for the whiners out there and, and those people who... You like to like to invade those forums and you know have a bit of a wine, a bit of advice for you. So, yeah, that's what we do. Uh, you can find that at Chaos Portal Show. Uh, you can also contact me at sparepartsmailbox at gmail You can also get a hold of me on Twitter at Mugiva. That's M O O G Y V E R. Squirrel. And that's it. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> I, I was actually just looking at the uh, the Geek Asylum Etsy store and. Uh, I actually picked up one of those wonderful 8-bit hair bows for my wife, and she loved it. So, uh, yeah, highly recommended, guys. <clears throat> Can I have my five bucks now? Yeah, yeah. of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, yeah. mail. Excellent. I made it out of paper clips. And two John, <laughs> <laughs> uh, John nice. how about you? How can people find you? Well, if people want to... Uh, you know, get me on their show so I can wrap it up long before it's actually over. Uh, you can <laughs> send that request to me on Twitter, Matt Revendon. R E V E N D A W N. Okay. <laughs> if you're looking for me, you can find me on Twitter. I am at Al the Mage. Um, I also do a couple other shows like Geektopia and Battle Pets. In fact, there's a, a new episode of Battle Pets out, like I mentioned kind of earlier before. Um, if you are wondering what to do with that uh, tw- level 25 uh, stone, listen to this episode. Aludra has a few pets that she really recommends that I totally agree with because they're good choices. Um, I'm also on the newest episode. I think it's 107 of the Starting Zone. Uh, we recorded that last night. As well as the next episode of Remversations, which is on the stormridecast.libsyn.com uh, where Rem and I talk about essentially <coughs> kind of being geeks and growing up and a bunch of other stuff. So, uh, yeah. With that, I used to have a whole lot of other stuff to uh, to say, but John took care of that. So, good night, everybody. Bye bye. Say goodbye, John. Our intro contains music from Volatile Reaction by <laughs> Kevin McLeod, and you can find more of his music at incompetech.com. And with that, the show is over. Save project.